Cause I'm gonna miss your love The minute you walk out that door Please don't go Don't go away, baby Don't go away I'm begging you to stay Cause I'm gonna miss your love <laughs> What song is that? Um, please don't go. I don't know. It's one of those old sappy. It's a sappy love song. A sappy love song. Cause I'm. Oh, what's another one like that? Um. <laughs> She's out of my life. And I don't know whether to laugh or cry. I don't know whether to live or die, but it cuts like a knife. She's out of my life. She's no longer my wife. <laughs> I, I stabbed her with this knife. No. <laughs> What's your favorite uh, breakup song? Oh, I could never guess. One favorite breakup song? Um, I like Love Rain On Me. By the who? <laughs> yep. Only love can make it rain Like the sweat of lovers laying in the field nah. <laughs> Only love can bring I was learning to the podcast. <laughs> Is I was learning here? You bet. You better believe it, sweetie. Bonjour, I was learning. And welcome to the show. And ke hoka, hey, grassroots here. Indians is here too. Let's get the show on the road, sweetie. Enough goofing around. Ladies and gentlemen, you wanted the best. You got the best. The hottest podcast in the world. <laughs> nah. Buju, nana buju. A podcast about Ojibwe language and culture. I am Nana Buju, and this is Natasha. Buju, and that's Michael Lyons. Hey, everyone, welcome to the show. And today, it's a beautiful uh, day, even though our new intro graphics may fix that. Buju Nana Buju by Michael Lyons. On this gorgeous Neo Gija Good Hoa, just gorgeously frozen outside. <laughs> yeah, I know. What is it now? Uh, let's see. Does it say? Um, sometimes the computer tells us what the temperature is outside. It won't right now. I got an umbrella. What's that mean? It's not raining. There's no way it's raining. But last time I checked, it was like two below. I think it's supposed to be like 10 below today or something. And this whole week's a wrap. I was like, oh, a high of zero. Oh, great. It's freezing up, and I'm already worried about the pipes. You think the pipes are going to freeze? Probably. I think when it gets below 10 below for five minutes, <laughs> the pipes just freeze up in this place. But that's not that's not the worst of it. I'm gonna have to go out there and shovel off all that snow just to get into the little crawl space area downstairs. I know. It sucks. Yeah, it sucks for me. You'll be in here eating bonbons, watching arrested development. <laughs> yeah. Neo Gijigud. The second day. Tuesday. And I think today we're talking about art, aren't we, sweetie? We sure are. Oh, but first. Get you gissana. It is very cold. Be careful out there, you guys. Call in sick if you have to. Your boss has no respect for it. what? It's ten below outside. I'm not. I'm not leaving. Keep your money. I'm gonna stay home today. No, you gotta pretend you're sick. Oh, I got the COVID. I just got a touch of the COVID. I'll be back tomorrow, I guess. But oh, and the card won't start. Did you try to start to pick up this morning? Yep. I'll pour some heat in that later after the sun comes up. I guess the sun's up now, but when it warms up to zero, 
we'll pour in some liquid heat and see if we'll if it'll start again. Grassroots Indian says supposed to be in the sixties today. What? <laughs> oh, Grassroots is in uh, Kansas. What for crying out loud? Why did I think Grassroots is in Cass Lake? <laughs> I don't know. This ain't Kansas anymore. Grassroots is down where uh, the Wizard of Oz took place. Well, it's da he's down where um um what's her name? Dorothy. Dorothy. Dorothy's from Kansas, but she got taken out of Kansas and she went to the wonderful Wizard of Land of Oz. The Land of Oz, that's right. Anyway, it's supposed to be in the 60s? How is that possible? How can it be in the 60s in Kansas and then you can drive to a place where it'll be 10 below? I think it's the uh, the chemtrails. You think it's the chemtrails? Yeah, that's what the chemtrails are. They're messing with the, with the weather. And they can make it rain and snow, but apparently they can also make a tornado freeze and warm the globe in Kansas for some reason. 60 degrees. I'm, let's go to Kansas, sweetie. You want to live in Kansas? Yeah. Who needs all these trees and lakes and mosquitoes? I'm going to go to Kansas where the real people live. Go hang out with grassroots Indians. <laughs> or we go see Diane Swope. Hey, boujou, Diane. Diane's here, sweetie. Hey, are we going to give out gold stars? Oh, we could, I suppose. Little, little juvenile, but let's give a uh, gold star to Always Learning, first in class. Gold star for Always Learning? Get you guessing out. It's very cold here in Minnesota. And grassroots, we'll give grassroots a silver star. Grassroots for silver star. <laughs> What'd you say? I mean, silver star for grassroots. Silver star for grassroots. Saying everything backwards, it's so cold. And my brain's frozen. And sh slidey side ice slacker. <laughs> Boujou is uh, in third place. Let's get a bronze star for slidey side ice slacker. 8379 on your FM dial. Boujou, slidey side. Boujou. And uh, <laughs> she says, my name looks like a chemtrail. Yeah, it does. <laughs> chemtrails. That it's not, it's not a conspiracy theory, but people get lumped in. If you say the term chemtrail, it's like, what are you, crazy? It's like, you know, I'm just talking about those trails of chemicals in the sky. Oh, that's just a plane. How do you know? Seems like it's trails of chemicals. And doesn't the Air Force admit that they've got technology to... Isn't that just common knowledge? I don't know if that's hidden technology that they can make it rain. Isn't it called seeding clouds? Yeah. So how far does that technology go? Can they make it blizzard? And why would they do that? You know what I think they're doing? What? I think there's uh, UFOs up there. Not spacemen from other planets. That's ridiculous. There's no such thing as other planets. But there are UFOs. And when they're due to kind of expose themselves for whatever reason, I don't know what they are, what they're doing. But the powers that be don't want us to see them. So they'll make it a cloudy night. You notice any time that there's a uh, lunar eclipse, they all, it's, oh, doggone it, right where I was. Would have been a good place to see the lunar eclipse or the solar eclipse. But darn the luck, it just happened to be a snowy day. Or like when there's going to be like crazy northern lights. You go out, you wait up until three in the morning. Oh, I'm going to go see the northern lights. Go freeze my butt off. And you look up and there's nothing but clouds. You go, doggone it. Well, I think the, you know, the government, which totally sucks, um, doesn't want you to see what's going on above the clouds. They're hiding something. And occasionally they just want to wipe out trailer parks in Kansas with a tornado. I think they're after grassroots Indians. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> and Missy's here. Good morning, cuz. Mino Giga Jabe. Missy's fighting the good fight. Fight the good fight, everyone. What is that? That's Triumph, baby. Triumph? 
I'm young and I'm wild and I'm free. Got the magic power of the music in me. <laughs> Are they Canadian? Yeah, I think so. That's another great Canadian band, Triumph. Rick Emmett. Man, that guy's great. He is. He's even better as an acoustic guitar player. You should see the guy go solo. He's amazing. Um, but why are we talking about Triumph? Something about chemtrails? Yeah. And killing off people in Kansas. That's what I think chemtrails are. I have no, you know, I don't know anything. I'm just making up theories. But today, we're not here to talk about that. Oh, did I also mention... Uh, uh, Nichiwad is a severe storm in Nichiwad. You got to watch out for those Nichiwad. Severe storms. When a uh, harp or whoever, when the government wants to uh, wipe out your trailer park, uh, Nichiwad, they'll make, it, they'll make it storm. So run. Run, run to the, run to Red Deer Table. Thunderheart, <laughs> the Calvary is coming. <laughs> Get out of here. Sweetie, sure realist just gave us a hundred bucks. <laughs> no way. I don't know if we can accept a hundred bucks. Why not? It's too much. No, it's not. We have bills. And also, our, our book sales are down. Sure realist, miigwech. Chi miigwech, thank you so much for your very generous super chat. 100 bucks, wow. Okay, we're going to donate, dedicate our song to Surrealist today. Because Sur Surrealist is uh, helping us build a home here. To build a home. Should I play it right now? Yeah, why don't you play it right now? Yeah, I'll play this song. This song is for Surrealist. Uh... For helping us build a home called Buju Nana Buju. And if it gets boring, I'm going to cut it out soon. But miigwech, I really appreciate it. The rest of the Buju crew would never do that. <laughs> Don't say that. This is dedicated to sure realist.
Miigwech. To build a home. And of course, by doing that, I just... <laughs> now we got to share the ad revenue for the day for that copyright. Yeah, I know, but it's worth it. <laughs> Grassroots Indian says, This is a classic, but the piano is making it sad. Yeah, no kidding, huh? Piano. Such a sad instrument. Not like the electric guitar. What about the blues? Oh yeah, you can get the blues. But anyway, so chemtrails, crazy weather. But today we're talking about Sylvester Stallone. Did you guys know that Sylvester Stallone, in addition to being the greatest actor of all time, <laughs> you think he's the greatest actor of all time? No, but he's my favorite. <laughs> yeah. And not because of Rocky. I mean, Rocky's so overrated. Uh, you know, uh, Sylvester Stallone really did his best work in a movie called Stop or My Mom Will Shoot. Even better than Over the Top? Maybe even better than Over the Top. But uh, Sylvester Stallone is what we would call a Mazinabi Ige Winini, an artist. Yeah, sure, he writes a little bit. And yeah, sure, he boxes. And he's an actor. And, you know, he's an, a video... This is a thing people don't give Sylvester Stallone credit for. His movies, you know, he's got... He does a lot of directing and editing and stuff like that in his movies. And he's, you know, he's been very creative. He's done stuff like... You know, if you like the montage... <laughs> Sylvester Stallone sort of invented the montage. I mean, he wasn't the only one who's ever did that, but making stuff, you know, seeing a person start working out with inspiring music in the background, and then, you know, da 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 da, on the big day, you know, he did stuff. In one of the Rockies, like one of the later ones, he filmed it so it looked like it was on uh, pay per view cable or something. The guy's really pretty creative. So, Mizuna B. Ige Winini. In English, actually translates as a drawing man. <laughs> Mizuna B. Ige is a, a drawing, you know, something you draw. Winini is a man. But that's our kind of word for somebody who creates art, who's an artist. Mizuna B. Ige Winini. But a painter. Shiju B. Ige Winini. A painter is uh, like Michelangelo. All right, here's a real painter. Paintings that set a standard that require skill, mastery of a techniques and uh, a soul, you know. This is one of my favorite paintings. I think it's on the, um, the Sistine Chapel or whatever. It's just a part of a painting. But it's just one of my favorite. It, something about it, I just love it. I love it too. I know. Uh, but in modern art, you know, we don't get that kind of stuff. What we get in modern art, well, he's not the worst offender of this. <laughs> Let's just take a look at uh Sylvester Stallone and one of his paintings. All right, if I didn't hadn't shown you a picture of uh, Michelangelo's painting before this, you probably wouldn't hate it. <laughs> so yeah, you know, okay. Try not to compare, sweetie. <laughs> Try not to compare Michelangelo. Yeah, maybe that's unfair. This is the Italian stallion, but he, you know, it's a big old painting. I think it's kind of cool. Do you like that? Yeah. I mean, I'd hang that on my wall. Well, what do we got there? It's a, it's a lady, and her shoulder's got like a arrow or a devil's tail or something. Some weird, what is that, 2119 with a clock in it? There's a heart. I don't know. So it's modern art, right? It's busy, it's loud, but it's big. It looks like it took him a long time to do it. He's got a lot of symbolic things in there. You know. All right. 
Hey, could while I'm talking about this, would you mind uh, getting him on the line for us? You want me to call up Sylvester Stallone? Yeah, we'll get him to talk about it a little bit. Okay. So, you know, Sylvester Stallone. He's a painter. Should you be a gay one any? And then, of course, whoops. Let's just take a look at. You know, people who don't think for themselves get really impressed with this kind of art. Like, oh, wow, look at that. Ooh, it's real art. Uh, it's expressionistic. Um, you know, whatever. So, the context of the painting is it's a there's a figure here with lopsided eyes wearing flowers in his hair I guess I guess it's a male figure he's pointing at his own face he's got some muscles he's got a short right arm doesn't even go down past his waist barely some confusing anatomy there in a towel but then you look over here. Oh, look out. What's this now? Oh, a devilish character. You can kind of see he started to draw some eyes underneath that. But this kind of painting, they don't want to be too specific because then it shows like the limits of their ability to draw. <laughs> and then over here, we've got what look kind of suggests a uh, female body or something, and it's lighter. You know, you can kind of read into it symbolically if you wanted. And, uh, you know, the brainwashing of art appreciation or whatever tells people, yeah, well, if you don't love this, then you don't really understand art. But after, you know, 54 years of being an artist on this, on this flat, immovable realm that we live on. I'm finally, I'm getting sick of pretending I like art like this. Sweetie, I got Sylvester Stallone on the line. Oh, you do? Yep. On line two? Yep, line two. All right. Hello, Sylvester Stallone. Welcome to the show. Thank you for uh, taking our call. Hey, yo, Nana Bougie, what are, you, what are you doing? You're talking about my paintings today? Yeah, yeah, I was just kind of pulling out some of your paintings and Actually, now that um, I have you on the phone, I'm starting to feel a little guilty. What's the matter? You don't like my paintings. I mean, come on. I've been, I have worked really hard on that. Did you work hard on this? I did. You know, I wanted to go and I had to buy a canvas. And I had to, uh, you know, really tried my best. All right, let me look at it again. Can you explain this a little bit for us? Yeah, that, that's a painting I call... Uh, the Italian stallion as modern art. Oh, is this a self-portrait? Yeah, that's right. That's me when I'm wearing, uh, you know, flowers in my hair. And then I got like a glowing face. But then I also got demons. And on the one side, there's the angel. And she's uh, it's like Adrian. She's the feminine. And then on, on the other side, there's a, a, a demon. Because I got demons, man. Do you really have demons? Oh, you better believe it. You know, there was a time I had to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Apollo Cree, and I had some inner demons I had to work through. Oh, yeah, in that movie, Rocky? Yeah. But, uh, why don't you pull up that other painting? I want to talk about that. This one here? Yeah. No, one thing you need to understand. When you're a professional artist, you can wear a, a suit, and if you put a tie on a, a, your white shirt, it looks really sharp. And so when you go to your art opening, don't forget to wear a nice suit. <laughs> You're just going to talk about your suit? Yeah, look at me. I look I look very handsome. Yeah, you do. You look very handsome, Sly. I'll give you that. Um, so what's, this, uh, what's up with that painting? Well, you know, that one I call uh, Mona Lisa. Mona Lisa. I think that one's already been called, taken. What, did somebody else name their painting Mona Lisa? Oh, that, that really that really bums me out. I'm going to have to call it something else. 
Maybe I'll call it Lisa Mona. Lisa Mona? Yeah, you know, I'll flip it around. So, what's the symbolic imagery message here? Well, you know, it's, uh, it's all about how it doesn't matter how, how tough you are, that life, it'll knock you down and keep you there if you let it. Oh, is that what that, this is about? Yeah, pretty much, you know. All right. Hey, speaking of Italians, um, what's up with uh, this little drawing? This is going to be gay. Oh, yeah, I, I do that on a $20 bill I had. You drew this? <laughs> yeah, I thought I'd put a, a Rambo, uh, you know, what's that called? Headband? Yeah, a Rambo headband on it. It looks kind of like me, if, if I can say so myself. I think this is brilliant. I had no idea that Andrew Jackson looks so much like you. Yeah, yeah forget about it. That thing went uh, kind of viral after I put it on the internet. Wow, that's so cool that you did this. Yeah. Okay. I don't care about anything else. I think you're the greatest artist of the 21st century. Oh, uh, you got to, you know, it's really nice of you to say, you know, I, I don't know what to say. Well, that's Amazing. <laughs> so, did you have a good Christmas, Sly? Yeah, you know, it wasn't too bad. I just, I kind of spent it alone, if I'm being totally honest. Why were you alone? Ah, uh, you know, everybody in my family, they're, they're afraid to have me over because I won't get the vaccination. You're not vaccinated? No, forget about it. I don't know what's in that concoction. I, I don't know. I got to take care of the, the Italian stallion's body, you know. It's a temple. Yeah, but don't you have to take injections of steroids every day? Well, that's one thing. But I don't know what's in the vaccination. You know, they don't even tell you. Well, yeah, but you can trust them. Dr. Fauci said it's safe and effective. Safe and effective. Yeah, right. Did you hear Paul Stanley got COVID for the second time? Yeah, that was pretty funny. I know, I couldn't believe it. Did you hear that, sweetie? Paul Stanley has COVID again? Yeah, second time. His guitar tech died from COVID. And since for the last two years, a day doesn't go by where Paul Stanley's not on Twitter, either wearing a mask, chewing out people for not getting vaccinated, canceling shows, you know. The Kiss even went so far that they were doing meet and greets behind plastic barriers. It was the weirdest thing. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. It was like the... the uh, Action figures came to life, but they decided to stay in the box. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So Kiss takes all these precautions. He's been vaccinated, double vaxxed, and uh, got the booster shots. Twice comes down with COVID. Just like uh, poor old Missy. You know. Uh, it's like, hey, Fauci, the, the vaccinations aren't working. People are still getting it and spreading it. Oof. Can you answer to some of these questions? I know. I'd like to know. You know, just give me five minutes in the ring with that Anthony Fauci, and I'd tell him what's up. Yeah, man, you'd waste Anthony Fauci, wouldn't you? Oh, <laughs> it wouldn't even be a match. You know, two hits. I'd hit him in that dumb face of his, and he'd, he'd hit the floor. <laughs> yeah, two hits. I think uh, Sylvester Stallone just quoted the uh, Breakfast Club. Two hits. I hit you. You hit the floor. <laughs> Is it to be a gay when any is a real artist? And, uh, yeah, I don't know. I've seen worse art than um, your paintings, I guess. You know. One thing I can say about your art, um, I mean, you know, it's, it's expressionistic, so I think it's cool for the person who made it. But it can't be compared to, like, real art, like, you know, Michelangelo. But it looks like it was fun to do. Oh, I had a blast. You know, I just cranked up the old 80s tunes. I turned down the soundtrack to the first uh, and second uh, Rocky movies. And then I got my paints out and I painted that thing. And it took me about three hours. I really had a good time doing it. <laughs> yeah, it looks like you had fun doing it. So, so uh, you know, I'm going to give it a pass. I'm not going to diss your painting like I did uh, Keanu Reeves' girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, that was hilarious. You ever see Keanu Reeves' girlfriend's uh, painting?
paintings. What, that old gray-haired lady? Yeah, that gray-haired crone who's actually seven years younger than him. Uh, she's a painter, too. You want to see one of her paintings? <laughs> yeah, I'd love to. All right, hang on. I mean, it's just, you know, I'm just done with crappy celebrity art. Oh, what does that know? This is Keanu Reeves' girlfriend's art. She's a millionaire artist. And, uh, you know, it's taken seriously by the art world. As what is, uh, that, that looks like the, the scribblings of like a crazy person. Yeah, it, they call it, I don't know if I can use the word. Um, it's supposed to kind of symbolize like a child who was traumatized. I don't know there's a term for this kind of expressionistic whatever. And uh, I think it's just, it's so bad it makes people dumber and less artistic for it existing. <laughs> yeah, that's a good way to put it. Anyway. So, um, all right, one more thing. So, Sly, what do you think of this painting? Oh, that's a beautiful painting. Yeah. So, you know, one of these is uh, a painting from a real artist, and one of these is a painting from Keanu Reeves' girlfriend. Do you know who painted this, Sly? I have no idea. It's, it's wonderful, though. It looks like a, a photograph. Yeah, it's such a beautiful painting, it looks like a photograph. This is from Hitler, <laughs> from <coughs> Adolf Hitler. That's right, the Führer. Adolf Hitler painted this. You gotta be kidding me. I know, it kind of makes you want to forgive him for what he did. <laughs> I tell you, uh, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't let him get away with, uh, you know, the Holocaust and all that. But uh, it really makes you kind of second guess what that guy was all about, doesn't it? That's what I'm saying. If you could paint like this, why would you ever get into politics? I don't understand it. But this is an Adolf Hitler painting. You see his signature down there. And, um, I don't know. If I say I respect Hitler, I'm gonna, they're going to take down my, my YouTube channel. <laughs> yeah, whatever you do, don't say that. Yeah, but so, there you go. And this has been your Ojibwe language lesson of the day, kids. Sylvester Stallone and I would like to thank you for considering our art lesson. And in fact, um, Adolf Hitler and who's the other guy? Uh, Michelangelo. Yeah, Michelangelo. They're pretty good painters. But Keanu Reeves' girlfriend, not so much. Hey, sweetie. Yeah? You got a call in line, too. Oh, really? Uh, Sylvester, I better get going. All right, I'll let you go. Hey, uh, giga wabba min, min -a -wa. Yeah, giga wabba min, min -a Sly. I'll see you again. On line two, sweetie? Yep, line two. Um, call her. You're on the air. Welcome to uh, Buju Nana Buju podcast. Hey, Nana Buju, what's going on? Hey, Sylvester, uh, what's his name? That's Keanu Reeves. Keanu Reeves. <laughs> How you doing? Oh, uh, not too bad. Not too bad. Feeling kind of down, though. Feeling kind of gnarly. Kind of depressed. Uh, why are you depressed? Nobody likes my movie, The Matrix. Oh, yeah. I heard it got some bad reviews. Yeah, you know, I mean, I was just trying to be an artist. I wanted to make something that people would appreciate. A work of art. I wanted to be a Mizena B. A gay win and E. But it was all gnarly. People were like, no, nah, that does that sucks. And now you're you're dogging my girlfriend's paintings. That's not cool, dude. It's not cool. You know? I mean, what's up? 
<laughs> yeah, uh, wow. A little embarrassed now. Um, well, I'm sorry. I know it's not cool of me to just diss, diss your girlfriend. And I appreciate you stand up for her, but come on, man. Are you telling me this is good art? Dude, she's an artist. I'm going to have her illustrate my children's book. She's not going to illustrate anything. This is not art, dude. Your girlfriend is a hack. She's a fake, phony. Don't say that. I love her. Well, you can love her all you want, but she's not. Let me just say, she's no Adolf Hitler. <laughs> well, you can say that again. But say that to her face. I'd like to see you say it to her face. I'll say it to her face. You think I care? I'm not afraid of your girlfriend. Hey, sweetie, why don't you get up here? Nana Bougia's talking crap about you. Hey, what's that, Shani? I said Nana Bougia's talking crap about you. Well, that little whippersnapper. How dare you? I worked really hard on my paintings, my dear. Yeah, well, it's just so stupid. Sorry, but I don't know. Maybe you never asked for anybody's opinion on your art. And I, granted, I, I don't need to just, who am I? Nobody. But to me, this is, this is uglier than, uh, well, it's not your fault. Eh, what's that, Shani? I said it's not your fault. And frankly, Keanu Reeves has seen better days too. I, I just don't understand. I just want to do my paintings. Yeah, I'm a painter, you know. How do you say painter in Ojibwe? Well, we say, Juju, I'm going to get rid of here. Juju be a gay when any is a painter. That's what I am, honey. I'm a painter. I want to share my gift of painting with the people. You know, so sorry. And so, I, well, I used to knit. And I knitted some mittens for my grandchildren. Oh, I knitted them some mittens. <laughs> All right, now I feel bad. Why? Because you're trashing a sweet old lady's artwork? Yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. What, what am I? I'm, you know, like I'm some great artist. Uh, Keanu Reeves' girlfriend, I really want to apologize. I, I was out of line. You're a sweet old lady, does sweet old artwork. And, you know, so what the phony baloney Hollywood people are willing to pay a million bucks for your doodles? Good on you that you convinced them to do that. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm not going to compare you to Hitler anymore. Eh, who's that now? You know Hitler? Oh, Hitler, that boy with the mustache. I remember when I was a girl in college, he was fighting in the World War II's. You're not that old. Eh, what's that, Shetty? Oh, I pooped my pants. Oh, darling, did you poop your pants? It's not a bougie. I better take I gotta change her to pants. Oh, it's nasty. <laughs> yeah, okay. I'll let you go. Gigawabi men, menawa, Keanu. And Keanu Reeves' girlfriend. Yeah, gigawabi men, menawa. Gigawabi men, menawa, Natasha. You too, Keanu. Sorry about your movie. Yeah, it's all right. All right. Yeah, I've been hearing a lot of bad reviews from that Matrix 4. Yeah, that's what I hear. There is just terrible. Everybody loves the new Spider-Man movie, though. That's kind of surprising. Yeah, we should go see it. Nah, it's too cold. You don't want to go out and warm up the car, go sit in a movie theater for three hours? That's the other thing. I can't go to a movie theater. for These movies are too long now. I need to be able to... Pause the movie and get up and make a meal. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> anyway. I can't believe we got a hundred dollars super chat, sweetie. <laughs> you know. Thanks again. It's embarrassing to see people's uh generosity. Mizuna be gay when an E is an artist. Michael, you always wanted to be an artist, huh? Yeah, I was always a uh, I always like drawing. Didn't you uh, illustrate some children's books in that? I sure did. Did you know that Michael Lyons once drew a book called Dog in My Ingen? Sweetie, did you ever read that book, Dog in My Ingen? I've read it a hundred times. <laughs> and, we, and we recorded ourselves reading it at least three times. Dog in My Ingen. <laughs> we should get the... If you want the book on tape, you know, just... YouTube dog and manga, and you can hear 
Natasha and I read it. But it's a book where it helps you count to 10 in Ojibwe. And it'll show you, you know, how to spell the numbers. No, it doesn't. Yeah, it does. Oh, yeah, it does. It comes to 10 in Ojibwe. And then Dog, who speaks English, would count out like, oh, one wolf. And then the wolf, who speaks only Ojibwe, would say like, oh, Beijing Maingan, which means wolf. And so you learn the Ojibwe and English for, I guess, 10 different animal names and how to count to 10. And it's called Dog and Maingan. And uh, you can order that on Amazon.com. Along with many other books by Michael Lyons. Are we going to have a New Year's Eve show this year? Yeah, I think we should. Do you want to do it on New Year's Eve? Yeah, should we actually start right at 11 and go to 12 and then do a May all acquaintance be forgot. La -dee -da. We should be doing it on Facebook or on YouTube? Hmm, good question. There is a way to, to, uh, I think we have to get like an extension for the, there's some way where some YouTubers can simultaneously post on Facebook. And it is a feature in the, uh, what do we call this? OB, OBS 27.1.364 bit windows, <laughs> our little, uh, live stream program. The free live stream program. Uh, but yeah, we'll probably do a New Year's Eve show. Have some songs. Have some special guests. Maybe we, Michael, you could come up and in real time talk to the crew. You think anybody wants that? Probably, actually. Yeah, I know, but I don't know. Are you camera shy? I'm a little camera shy. I know, me too. I, I get so shy and embarrassed when I'm on camera, huh, sweetie? I know. It's like you're you're a redskin. <laughs> no. You're racist. Ladies, what do, we, what do you do? What would you do if you found out you were dating a racist? I am dating a racist. You're the one who's a fan of Hitler. <laughs> what, just because I love Hitler paintings? It doesn't make me a racist. Could you date a racist? Yes, I could date a racist. <sighs> How can you say that? Well, because like you said, the term racist means an Indian person who doesn't want to assimilate. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was our lesson this week on the radio show. We were making New Year's resolutions. And I said, one resolution I'm going to make. I said, got to quit being such a racist. I got to quit saying all those racist words. Every I use the N-word like a comma. <laughs> no, no. But uh, you know, I was kind of joking around. But then I rem wanted to remind people that that term racist was first used. Nobody ever called anybody a racist before uh, the boarding school era. That must have been the glory days of uh, saying what you want. <laughs> Just the freedom to make the most racist comments. They had no word for it. Yeah. Being a called a racist is a pretty new... I mean, it's only like three or four generations long. Uh, and so, I mean, I'm not saying there wasn't racism in the old days, but that the, the term was coined by, oh, what was his name? I always want to call him Elcott Pratt. I don't know if that's his name. General, the boarding school guy. It was in an official U.S. government document, they said. There are certain Indian people who don't want to let their kids, don't want to send their kids to boarding schools. They reject the idea of learning English and adopting and assimilating into the English ways and the Christian ways. You know, there was a time when the government didn't try to sugarcoat that. They're like, we're going to assimilate your children. But there were certain Indians who resisted. They're like, no, no, we don't want to have our children go to boarding school. And the U.S. government called them the Indian racists. I said, yes, there's lots of racists in Canada and northern Michigan and northern Minnesota. The racists don't want to let their children go to boarding school. What a bunch of racists. 
So we were the first racists. But, I don't know. When you're in a relationship, there's just certain, sometimes there are just certain things that you can't, you can't get past. You know, when I was a social justice warrior, when I was a much bigger liberal than I am today, I used to have these hard and fast, if a woman accidentally stepped on a lie and said something racist, it was over. You know? But then, in those days, everything, I thought, you know, everywhere I looked, I saw something racist, you know. She's like, oh, do you like my Black Hills gold ring? What? You have a Black Hills gold ring? You racist. Do you know where that, that's our sacred land. You wear that ring as a symbol of uh, Indian oppression. I don't get out of the car. I would just, I, I wouldn't even drive him home. <laughs> really? Nah. But now it's like, would I date a racist? I, you know, I don't know. If I was dating a Chinese girl who had feelings about the Japanese, <laughs> you know, I'd probably just not even want to get involved. So what's going on down here? A new Toyota is a work of art. Not a stupid movie. <laughs> you don't think movies are works of art? Not even uh, Matrix 4? Gotta take the blue pill. Or can you... I heard somebody say the Matrix 4 is just about transgenderism. It's about uh, turning into uh, the other genders. And, you know, blue and the red or the male and female. Or something. And the more I look at Keanu Reeves' beard, the more convinced I am that he's probably not a real guy. Really? You know, that's, that's some weird balding, you know. It just looks like maybe it was hormones or some kind of plastic surgery seeding of facial hair. If you told me that, yeah, that was a, a woman who transitioned, I'd be like, yeah, okay, sure. That stands to reason. How about that uh, transgender um, swimmer? Oh, <laughs> that dude who went in. Didn't he win by like 38 se seconds? Uh, no, she. <laughs> oh, wait, sorry. She just won by 38 seconds. Yeah, it was ridiculous. Six foot two professional male swimmer checks the I'm a lady box and gets to compete in swimming. And it just, you know, it's not even close. This is ridiculous. And I guess one of the uh, referees or somebody just walked off. They're like, this is ridiculous. I'm not, I'm not going to be part of this anymore if you're going to let transgender men, women compete. That's dumb. <laughs> and all the other ladies are like, oh great. They're gonna they're gonna have to come up with a third category of just transgender athletes. It'll be like a special Olympics, only for transgender people. And then you can have Bruce Jenner and this guy and whoever else is weightlifters. They can just compete against each other. It's not fair. You still got a man's body. <laughs> you know, you identify as a woman. That's one thing. But Stay out of the pool. That's racist. No, no, sweetie, that's transphobic. What, you think they, they should be swimming in separate pools? That's just like the racists in the 60s. Oh, yeah, remember that? Blacks only swimming pools. <laughs> It'll be like that with transgender people. Well, they are doing that now. Cause they have transgender bathrooms. I think all bathrooms are transgender now. Did they win that finally? Probably. <laughs> There's no more. I saw somebody say this thing where uh, they were going, I'm glad smoking in a boy's room was written back in the day. Because these days it would that song would be, Vaping in a gender neutral room. I was vaping in a gender neutral room. Hey, hey, now, teacher, don't you feel me? 
up with your rules. Because everybody knows that vaping ain't allowed in school. <laughs> yeah, it would be. <laughs> you want to get up here, sweetie, and say hello to the crew? Sure. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to uh, introduce the lovely and talented Natasha. After these messages from Ojibberish. Oh, I mean, no, no, this is this a better way. Buju Nana Buju will return after this special announcement. No, after these messages, after this commercial break. The only book you should really buy on Michaels, if I'm being honest, no offense. No, go ahead. Is uh, Ojibberish. It's a collection of cartoons. Um, all the Ojibwe you're bound to learn in the other children's books you'll learn in Ojibberish. And you get the little cutie story. Here's a commercial for Ojibberish, an illustrated introduction to Ojibwe Moen. Illustrated and written by Michael Lyons. My intro to the commercial is longer than the commercial. <laughs> yeah, just play it. All right. Miigwech. Bizendawayag. Thank you for listening. Yeah, I know, but it's kind of a cool song. That's true. Hey, everybody! Boo, zoo! How you doing? Natasha Nandishanikaz. Natasha is my name. Neiman Wendum, G A A N, Omanungum. I'm happy to be here today. And I want to say boo, zoo to Nancy Gladstone. Boo, zoo, Nancy Gladstone. Welcome to the show. Nancy says, I can't believe I'm really here. Ah, oh, Neen. We're so happy to have you here, Nancy. Our sophisticated show about Ojibwe language, culture, art. Actually, today, we, this landed on a good day, huh? What do you mean? Tuesdays are usually dig, if you will, a picture day. Oh, that's right. We didn't even pull up the Prince meme. Dig, if you will, a picture. Sometimes on the show on Tuesdays, which started, and then we kept forgetting... We would call Tuesdays, dig if you will, a picture day. And we'd look at pictures from famous artists, like Keanu Reeves' girlfriend. <laughs> I like how we can't even be bothered to learn her name. Yeah, she says Keanu Reeves' girlfriend. <laughs> but it's true, she's not even as old as him. And so it's really dumb that we make fun of how old she is. Like she's, you know, she's younger than us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dig, if you will, a picture. But over the year, I guess, it's only been one year we've been doing this. I know, it's been a fast year, but it's also been kind of like, uh, I mean, it's gone by fast, but in a way, I feel like we've really done a lot. In a way, we have, huh? You know, we've read poems. and It was a year ago, New Year's Eve. I guess we had a couple of trial run live streams before that <laughs> you did a couple of pre-taped live streams which didn't doesn't count but on new year's eve last year was when we did our first hour long um in fact i think it was only half an hour 
uh, live stream show. And uh, I didn't know if we could really even pull it off. I mean, a whole hour? We were, we were doing 10-minute bits. I was like, how do you talk about Ojibwe language for a whole hour? And then we started talking about paintings and stuff, and we found out that we were big fans of Hitler, <laughs> you know, and uh, Michelangelo. And then we started talking about conspiracy theories, and the Buju crew was like right there with us, like, yeah, hey, did you ever look into, um, <laughs> you know, the fake moon landing? It's like, are you kidding me? <laughs> you know, Elvis is still alive, don't you? Yeah. What, you believe David Bowie died of cancer? Get out of here. Um, but then we started talking about conspiracies and art and poetry. We read some poems and then history, fake history, conspiracy histories, art history, <laughs> you know, Ojibwe history. And then stories. We tell a lot of stories and stuff. And when I was looking back at some of the videos from just this last year, I was like, wow. You know, that's kind of why I wanted to do, to build a home. Sometimes I feel like our little morning chat, which is all this is, is a little getting together with new friends and old friends and people just, I don't know. <laughs> you know, I think part of it is too. What's that? This month, we've gotten more views than um, ever before. It was... Um, a lot of new viewers. And I suspect it had something to do with the Indian country today. Two days after that story ran, we had a peak. We had like twice as many viewers. But, what was I going with this? Something about our viewers and people are coming here. Oh, have you noticed how bad YouTube is lately? You mean like how you can't find anything you want to watch? Yeah. So many of the videos and the channels I used to watch have been taken down, censored, or whatever. And lately, like, the stuff they just kind of recommend for you, I'm like, why are they recommending this video I watched three years ago? How come, like, the... I was like, what happened to all the cartoons and the music and the conspiracy stuff and the celebrity gossip and the whatever? My window of recommended channels keeps getting smaller as YouTube keeps taking away content. And so I'm starting to wonder, it's like YouTube's been so boring lately. I mean, unless you want to hear the propaganda about how important it is to get a vaccination. Um, you know, I mean, it was like, oh, here's a clip from a Dr. Phil episode. <laughs> like, what? I don't need to see that. So I'm thinking there's more people are stopping by in the morning because there's less to watch. Like, what? You know? I think we're taking that place of where people who aren't total deviants, who at one time might have listened to Howard Stern, and they're just like, I don't need to hear some old man degrade a woman, you know, his granddaughter's age for entertainment. I mean, something happened in me where, I don't know, maybe when I was, when I got older, certainly when I got older, but like, I used to listen to Howard Stern all the time. And now I listen back to what I used to listen to, like, oh my gosh, that guy is the worst. What a degenerate, I, 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 the words I want to use are not appropriate. The stuff he does to women and the normalization of porn, all of just, oh, I was like, how is this entertaining? I don't remember. But I remember watching Howard Stern and going, hey, you know what? When we were thinking of doing this show, it's like, well, we could have like, that banter that we everyone likes about Howard Stern, you know, how he'd like talk to, what's her name, and Artie Lang. And people just joke around, talk about gossip and whatever, and dumb little stuff at this regular day. And uh, I don't know, I kind of like that part of our show. I'm rambling on. What am I talking about, sweetie? You were going to review the Ojibwe of the day. That's right. 
Well, in review, everybody, Neo Geisha got to second day, and I would like to second everything you had to say. All right. I make a motion. I second that. <laughs> okay. Um, Neo Geisha good. It was the second day. Brr. Get you kissing eye. It is very cold. It is below zero. The pipes are going to freeze up. Nietzsche wood. There's a severe storm coming in. Oh, you don't want to be living up here. <laughs> you know what I think about sometimes? Who's that? The Somali refugees who ended up in Minnesota the first time. Yeah, that must have been a shock. <laughs> Can you imagine coming from Africa? They go, hello, welcome to Minnesota. This is what we call winter. What, you don't own a parka? <laughs> Enjoy. Um, and then we talked about art and the painters. Isn't it be he gay when any is an artist or a drawing man? Just you be a gay when any is a painter or a painting man. La 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 do do do. And uh, I think that's all I have to say about that, sweetie. Did you want to call it a show? Yeah, kind of. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, unless you have anything you want to add. No, just tell them I said thanks. Thank you so much from the bottom of our heart for listening to us ramble on. Miigwech, bisendawiyeg. Um, thank you for the super chat once again. We really appreciate it. And uh, thank you to everyone who watches the show. I want to say miigwech, ganawabiyeg. Thank you for watching. Boujou. Nana Boujou. The podcast about Ojibwe language, huh, huh, sweetie? That's right. And culture. I am Natasha. This is Nana Boujou. Okay, miigwech. This is Michael Lyons. Thanks so much. We'll see you tomorrow. And I will see you again. Gigawapa men. Menawa. Oh, Sweetie. One to teleport. Make it so. Number one. Uh,